thank you. Um, I also want to acknowledge Caitlin Conover. She did a lot of the legwork uh, digging around and looking this information up. And I would just say one of the issues with this topic is how hard it is to go to all the various states and, and feel confident that you have the right information. You know, we've done our best to do that. Uh, there were a few states, you know, we would go to each state and uh, try to find the publications and the references for both for NRCS, the uh, regulatory agency, and the university. And then we would go and um, find what we could find, and then we could contact people in the state to help confirm whether we had the right information. Uh, there's a couple of states we've not been able to get uh, a response from. Um, but so, and I'll, I'll note that, you know, that has a couple implications on a few of the slides, and I'll note where that is. But I just want to acknowledge the hard work Caitlin did put in to, uh, to look up this information. Um, so at the heart of the issue here is the question, and I'm going to start basic and move forward because I didn't really know where everybody was on these topics. But does manure and chemical fertilizer, are they the same? Uh, you know, we used to work with commercial fertilizers, the idea that you put 180 pounds of, let's say, a kindness down in the field. Uh, you know, if I use manure instead, how much manure do I need to put down to get the same amount? Or another way of looking at it, if I put if I need 180 pounds, and I have a manure source that has 60 pounds per thousand gallons, if I put 3,000 gallons down, is that enough? Or do I need, uh, is there an availability issue where I have to put more total end contact down as manure than a commercial fertilizer? So that's, that's the system that we're dealing with. There's, there's uh, definitely data out there, you know, looking at availability of manure nitrogen. There's actually not as much as you might expect, but um, you know, this is just, I'm going to show a few slides, just demonstrating that you know, typically we find that availability is less than 100% in the nitrogen. This is uh, the study that's out of Iowa, showing that on average with the floor litter, uh, layer litter, turkey litter, that on average it's about 45% available. Here's another study that hog manure that's been injected or, or uh, Incorporated. The blue lines are total added to the buy. The red is the estimated available. Uh, this is fairly common, this kind of data that's quite variable from site to site. There's one that's showing uh, essentially 100% availability, one that's showing 20% availability, on average about 80% availability from these studies. Uh, this is another study that we that. Uh, we were typically applied onto some plots uh, and compared to ammonium nitrate and 135, 134 pounds of total nitrogen. Again, you see that year to year uh, variability consistently below 100%. So, just some data to just emphasize the idea that you know, manure is not, the total nitrogen content of manure is not uh, 100%. <laughs> All right, so um, given that there's quite a range of factors out there that can have impact on the source, the uh, type of treatment that is, the way it's stored, um, it can have impact on placement, uh, timing, weather, all these things play into the availability. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, what I am going to focus on though is looking at how these availability factors stack up across various states. Uh, to understand a little bit about how it was calculated, we can look at different sources of the door. I'm going to start with, with the swine door. Uh, this is a, these numbers are actually from the 2004 version of the uh, uh, mirror characteristics publication in the experts and the standard views. The mirror typically breaks down into two parts. It has the intermediate volume national component and an organic. Uh, in the swine manure, the typical number is about two thirds is the volume nitrogen source, and the rest of the organic. In this case, I have a full nitrogen content of 50 pounds um, per thousand male nitrogen. There's two different uh, So, if I apply that material on the surface, that volume component has the potential to fall to the air or the thirds of nitrogen. Uh, by the client, the organic nitrogen is 
use generalizing technology then and being picked up by a major plan. So I incorporate that material theoretically I press it off that potential involved information so that the volume component uh, is a higher availability than the super supply. And this is the this is the heart of the improvements availability calculation. There's two different approaches that are used in different states. One is a one factor approach where you look at the total nitrogen value of the manure and you multiply it by the availability factor. Uh, an example of that is Minnesota. They say for injecting cod manure that uh, it's 80% available, available, so I take my 8 pounds, multiply it by 0.8, and the estimate has 46 pounds of plant available uh, to the so some of the benefits of this system is, is, is simple. There was one over time the availability factor, uh, and, and, and so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, maybe a liability of this is doesn't really reflect any changes in the zero content in terms of different ratios of ammonia and and a second approach is a uh, two-factor approach. The two-factor approach is availability factor associated with the organic nitrogen content of the manure and the volume content of the manure. So this means you need to have a, a more flex manure analysis to analyze both of those constituents. Um, this very is an example of a two-factor state. So we have our organic content of the manure, our volume content of the manure, Anyways, so the organic uh, times uh, our availability factor for the organic is 39% for the first year. Our, our retention or how much of that volume is available is 95% for uh, injected manure. So I multiply those numbers through and I get 42 pounds um, per thousand pounds as available range from that manure. So this, this particular approach more complicated, uh, you know, requires more, more work in terms of the manure analysis, uh, but maybe is a little more uh, capable to handle changes to the ratio of organic to inorganic and to the uh, Okay, so we then look. Fairly low. 
compared to the service application, where we would expect to see lower availability service application. The averages across the state bear that out. Uh, but there's a lot less agreement on what the features are. So, uh, so I guess from a biological system perspective, when you look at comparing the different state numbers, it represents a situation where in a system that we're less sure of what the number is, we see a more variable in this estimates in this case today. However, I'm not doing part of this analysis where I want to see if there's a relationship between any environmental factor and differences across these states, but again, I can say I look across these states, I'm not really picking up a clear uh, sense of that. Um, there are implications, though, of uh, having these differences. So what I've done here is taken up just the Iowa, Indiana, Ohio, that is across there, actually Indiana, and then Illinois are pretty similar. I right, have the same numbers in this case. So that band across the Midwest. Because of the differences in availability, I'm only going to put down 150,000 land availability. In Iowa, I was limited to putting down about 2,600 gallons of freight. Uh, in contrast, in Ohio, I'm going to put down about 4,300 gallons of availability. On the other side of that, in the surface, Service supply. Um, the service supply, the difference is becoming more than that. And basically, here, if you go from Iowa, you can get the Illinois service application in Ohio. You can put down four times the amount of war. So, from a logistics perspective, you can perform auto operation, you can be limited by land. But if you have a situation where you your, your hot operating is four times the amount of land to the open system based on objectives in the middle of Iowa to service supply in, um, in, in, uh, in Ohio. So these things have economic implications and they also have a competitive perspective. Uh, this difference in land and need would be important for, uh, for a permanent operation. There's also an important implication. I haven't really talked much about the phosphorus before. The manure has an unfavorable impression in the phosphorus ratio. If you look at the amount of phosphate that's applied in the 150 pounds of benefit in the Ohio system, you can get as high as 400 pounds of phosphate applied with that manure application. Whereas in Ohio, in Iowa, it's closer to 110. So this has dramatic environmental implications. This has the potential to increase the school test. Essentially, it's um, a large increase in the amount of annual basis with the price rate of the in Ohio. So, again, these are not numbers that have, have no consequence in terms of their difference. Uh, we can have them go out, we can have them a low availability value. Uh, and, and the form of the system can apply on an actual basis. These are higher going in the small cost. Okay, so let's look quickly at a couple other systems. Uh, water water litter has a lot lower. Uh, this is actually a gift from that publication. It's a very high percent of the population of water litter. I think it's getting closer to 10 to 15 percent of the population. That's the little bit of the numbers that were in there. So that's most of the problem part. High extent of the information in it. When you look at the uh, values of the, the state, uh, uh, all right. So if you look across the state, the service, uh, these are the service application numbers, um, and here's the injection numbers. Uh, as we would expect, the, the source of the numbers is primarily organic. We don't see as much difference as we move from injection versus service supply. And also, interestingly, in this case, we read a lot more from the state to state based on uh, what was balanced. Um, we looked at a very spurred example across states. And uh, it looks like this is not a spend much time on these. But in this particular case, when we see a nice case, it looks like a case not five numbers more than the value of the numbers. And finally, I've got a sample list. Um, 
even uh, reference of what organic nitrogen is. There is no more test organic nitrogen. We take total nitrogen to subtract off ammonia nitrogen, but there is no standard uh, what people are supposed to use for terminology. And I think that's the first step of identifying now, say by state, is there a question on variation of uh, you, you said uh, the producer's uh, ability or, or uh, difference in or the, the, the competition is different in different states. That that is a thing. The, the question on environmental issues or, or uh, contribution we do take into account soil moisture and other pieces with the application and the multiplication process inside of the hay waste program so that is being done. So I guess a couple of things I would just say. The first thing is you were talking about well there's a range of uh, interpretations of one of my and you know you you can say well we've got this one you know, we have this one publication, we have another publication, and if you're in the know, you know, you know to use this publication if you're not in the know. And I would just encourage you, if you're used to working in this and you wonder what the challenge is, just go to the next door state and just, just as a thing, say, well, what, what number should I use? And it's very, put yourself in those shoes of you know, somebody coming from the outside. It's very difficult. Like you said, there's a lot of variation in the way things with the material analysis. I mean, just a state that uses total nitrogen versus a state that uses both. And you're used to, you come into a state and give a guy, give me total nitrogen, well, they break it out by organic nitrogen, ammonia nitrogen, and that state is wrong. So, you, you know, a lot of the things that I, you pointed out, you know, I just answered yes. The, I think it is a real issue from a competitive and environmental perspective that the numbers are so different. And I really, I, I challenge anybody to find a biological reason why there's such variation to the surface application. Uh, you know, we're, that's the next step of what we're going to be doing this data is, I think, by inevitably, if there is really no biological explanation, it does have environmental and competitive effects. Not everybody is motivated to get maximized nutrient value in manure. And I think it's inappropriate that in certain states, and I can allow farmers to way over apply phosphorus in what are completely appropriate um, applications according to the rules when it has a, a competitive impact on state, you know, when we start having process rules and also, you know, in just in terms of the amount of manure and where we have to move it. So I, I do think that this inconsistency is really the, the core of my message. Inconsistency of approach, inconsistency of how easy it is to find information, and an inconsistency of the implications of what happens. It doesn't have to be that way. We just need to sit down and make it a priority. And I really think that NRCS has an opportunity to do that.